way is him. He is the way. Elijah had the power of breakthrough in his life. Because he was not compromised, he had the power to break through. He had the power to, to pray, and the, the curse that was on the land, the famine, breaks open and rain comes. Look at the believers of the book of Acts, also on fire for God, and what happens? They, are, they see breakthrough. They see prison doors open. They see an empire opening. They break curses. They, there's a power of breakthrough. And for those who will live all out, you will have the power of breakthrough. Compromise stops breakthrough, hinders your breakthrough. But all out for God opens the breakthrough. Elijah was a man of righteousness. It's written in the New Testament, he was a man, the effectual prayer of a righteous man does much. A righteous man who doesn't pray, that doesn't do much. A praying man who isn't righteous doesn't do much. But a righteous man or woman who's in God's will and prays, that does a lot. Elijah was a righteous man. He was in God's will and he prayed according to God's will. And he did great and mighty things. It goes together and the power of prayer is greater than the power of Wall Street, the power of Moscow, the power of the White House, the power of anything. What else about Elijah key for the end times? Elijah was in the presence of God. Moses had to be in the presence of God. Daniel had to be in the presence of God to stand strong with God. The disciples had to be in the presence of God that the Holy Spirit came and they changed the world, but the presence of God comes first. In the end times, it's not just a good thing to be in the presence of God. It is a vital thing to be in the presence of God. The power of God comes in the presence of God. And I say that not just for people on the sidelines, but people who are in ministry. The power for ministry comes in the presence of God. Elijah had to also hear from God. He had to know when God was saying yes and God saying no. Paul had to hear from God. He had to know when to go right, when to go left. All the more in the last days, we have to be listening to God to know when to go, when not to go. Believers have been saved from death because they heard a voice and listened. Or they had a dream and said, don't go on that plane, don't go on that bus. Again and again and again. I remember I was doing a, a wedding and I gave an altar call at the wedding. And after the call, after the, you know, there, was a, there was a kind of gathering and I said, I just have to go outside. And I went outside. I go for a walk. I said, I just have to go out. And I'm walking and there's a man in the distance and I just walk in his direction. He says, I've been waiting for you. I said, really? He said, Yeah. He said, I just prayed that prayer that you said, but I didn't know what to do, and I just wanted you to, to come and talk to you. But I had a, it was like, Lord, that led me to get out. I didn't know exactly what it was, but it was the Lord. We have to be open, and we have to be hearing. Elijah, notice, also was unafraid. He didn't, he didn't go by what was all around him. He knew what God said. The same spirit that allowed David to stand against Goliath, and Moses to stand before Pharaoh. It's not that they didn't have fear, fear, they weren't afraid, but that they overcame it because they knew what God had. They knew they, knew they heard from God. And so they conquered their fear because they knew it. And God is calling us to conquer our fear. It's not that you don't have fear to deal with. Everybody did. Jeremiah did. They all did. Peter did. They all did. But they overcame it because they knew God. And they said, I'm going to step out against my fear. God wants us to step out against fear. Step out against your fear. You can even, it may not just be the, the, the fear God is calling, but you may have other fears in your life, and to get into it, start doing the thing you're afraid of doing. Start, you know, step up to that person, share the gospel with that person. Just step out of your fear. Whatever you wouldn't do, do it. And because God wants it, requires us to go against fear. Elijah is most famous for giving that question, decide, Israel, make up your mind, decide and that means he had to be decided first. So it means if we're going to pose that, if we're going to be strong to those around us, we have to be decided people. I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. There's no options. I can't waver anymore. I've decided. I've decided to follow Jesus. I decided not to follow sin years ago. I can't keep wavering with that. 
That's been decided. Decide in, in, the, in the Latin, decide, de decision means to cut off. When you decide something, you don't just say, I, I'd like to go here. You are cutting off the alternative. You're closing the door. I don't have that alternative to, to do that, to fool around with that anymore. I've cut it off. I've decided. Not indecisive, decided. You made up your mind. And the last thing about Elijah, and the key, is that Elijah... Elijah, well, it says, that, it says that he said, go and look toward the sea. He told his servant. He went up and looked, and, said, and the servant said, there's nothing there. Seven times, Elijah said, go back and look to the sea. Seven times. The seventh time, the servant reported, there's a cloud. It's about as small as a man's hand. It's rising from the sea. Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, Hitch your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Elijah saw nothing, but he was a man of faith and hope. Hope. I mean, he looked up. I mean, even when he took Elisha there, he was waiting for that chariot. You know, he looked up. He was heavenly minded. He was a man of hope. Knowing that no matter what is around him, I know my hope, I know who called me, I know what, I know what is waiting for me, I know my reward, and so I'm going to be strong. As Paul said, we run this race, we fight this fight, not without aim. We look forward to what is coming. We look forward to, I look forward to receive the imperishable wreath and that well done, good and faithful servant. Paul said, I'm, I'm ready to receive that prize. I've fought the good faith fight. I have, I have run the race. I have something great ahead of me. And for all you who stand with God against the odds, you have a great reward. You have a great hope. As in the days of Elijah then, we are to be people of hope. You never give up. Because God wins, God is on the throne, you are on his side, you are on the winning side, that means you never give up. You have hope no matter what. Hope is not just I hope so, it's I know so. This is my hope that I cling to, that I stand on. Even when it, not, when it looks impossible, we have a stubborn hope. No matter what, that's, that's when it's really hope. Though the mountain falls into the heart of the sea, we will not be shaken. For we are not of this world. We are of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are people of hope. We do not fear. Do not fear the future. Do not fear the days ahead because God holds the future and you are in God who loves you. Come what may.